What's up guys? Jake, Jake Back Knives, another edition of New Knife Wednesday. So, if you don't know what New Knife Wednesday is, New Knife Wednesday is where we come in with the old, the new, the present, the past, the future, whatever. And uh, we bring you guys what we're working on, what we have worked on, and you know, what I'm trying to do in the future. So, always super exciting, super cool one we got going today. We're gonna do the Enoch. Uh, so, new folder from Jayco Back Knives. Uh, I'm Jay Kobach. If you don't know who I am, I'm still not sure why you're watching these videos because that's rather confusing because YouTube has plenty of people who ramble on and on in front of the camera. I'm one of those, but very small in this world. So uh, without further ado, I've uh, been doing this for a lot of years, uh, pushing better part of two decades, making knives, making tools, making things for dangerous people to stay dangerous, and making things for you awesome collectors who are probably the only ones watching these videos. And yeah, just overall, just been trying to master this craft in which we call knife making. Uh, sadly, I think uh, at this point in life, uh, knife making is the easy part. Business is always the hardest part. So if you're a knife maker or an aspiring knife maker, uh, you know, always keep that in mind. Learn business before you learn knife making. <laughs> uh, so with all the joking aside, let's dive right into the Enoch. The Enoch is a pretty cool life knife. We have been trying for a long time to design a knife that was a little bit less expensive. Um, most of our stuff is uh, is pretty luxury grade, and this is no different other than some material choices and some strategies in which we made the knife uh, for machining and material choice and the fact that it is a liner lock that we're able to bring the price down. So check out the website. They're available for sale today, uh, up on the website once we get this uploaded. So, you know, it'll be a day or two. Um, but you can check out the pricing and all that stuff and all of our awesome dealers that have these knives, uh, we're already getting ready to, uh, be, sending these out here shortly so really excited there's been a lot going on so i'm like crazy overwhelmed with everything but the enoch is pretty cool i was really excited so i wanted to come into the studio do a really quick video for you guys just give you a, a rundown all the specifications and uh you know figured you guys would really enjoy this um so it is a three and five sixteenths blade Handle length is four and five sixteenths. Now these numbers are rough. They're 10, 20 thousandths off, but I figured you guys don't want to the fifth decimal place. So I'll just give you the, the simple breakdown in fractions because hey, fractions, you know, at least I'm not doing it in metric because metric. Still don't know why you're so much easier metric than imperial, but we still use imperial. So I don't know. Uh, at any rate, even though some of our screws are imperial, some of them are metric, you know, because, hey, why make things easy in life? Uh, so this is a stainless steel liner lock, and I will just zoom in here because I don't want to make this a giant production. So I'm just going to get up and close and personal here with you. I've got a G10. We're going to have these in black and OD green G10 stainless steel liner lock. with an awesome blade, a titanium clip, all stainless hardware, and a stainless blade. If I'm not mistaken, we're 20 CV, but if I am mistaken, we will correct it on the screen. Wow, I'm looking old. I've been doing this for a long time. I really need to get out of the shop, or maybe I just need to shave, I don't know. So, the liner lock. This thing's pretty slick. This is our actually our first real liner lock. Um, we did the MK Ultra a few years back. We did several runs of them, uh, kind of sprint runs. And the MK Ultra was kind of a liner lock in that it was more of an insert lock where there was a uh, uh, stainless steel lock bar that had a little web on the back side of it that dropped into a little dovetail and pinned into place. And it had aluminum scales. We did aluminum scales, titanium scales. Um, I don't think we ever did the G10 version. Um, 
and it works really well. Uh, it was super lightweight. It was pretty awesome, but it was it was pretty challenging to make the uh, the insert lock fit in the frame, and it was just kind of an expensive project for kind of a liner lock. It's more like an insert lock. This is a true liner lock in that we have two stainless steel scales. Uh, it still has bearings. Um, and then we excluded the HRD on this model. Uh, it just was not feasible in a liner lock to put the HRD because of the length of the screw. So we went with a ceramic detent. Uh, we went with a G10 backspacer, G10 scales on top of this stainless liner. That was able to reduce the cost a little bit. Uh, we still went with premium steel, premium pocket clip, and premium hardware. That's like that's one place where I never want to compromise is uh, form and function. Um, it should fit your hand perfectly, but it should also function perfectly. Um, you know, and the fit. Um, obviously, I guess I, I shouldn't say that we really skimped anywhere. It was just it was more of a design aspect that we changed so that we we're able to manufacture things a lot less expensively which is that's been a huge challenge for me since i've always been of like who cares what the cost is let's just make it like how do we do this like let's do this this is a cool idea and then this project was pretty neat because i was able to really like change my mindset and think okay i've got the knife designed I designed it the way I normally design everything else. You know, I go into in my parametric CAD and I model up just the coolest thing I could possibly think of. And then I went back to it and I said, okay, now looking at this from putting, you know, pulling my design hat off, putting my manufacturing hat on, I'm like, okay, how can I make this less expensive? I'm like, okay, so I can choose some less expensive materials, but then I have uh, compromise there so I'm like okay so I don't want to skimp on blade that's like that's huge so 20 CV is awesome blade steel um, all you knife snobs you love awesome blade steel so we stick with that um, so 20 CV I know you guys love titanium so I added the titanium pocket clip because hey you know you guys like titanium pocket clip and we're selling them to you guys so you know, you get what you want. So you can always anodize them and stuff like that. Stainless steel hardware is always a huge one for me. I am wholly against uh, using things that rust easily. So I uh, spent too many years in Texas and the humidity and the heat were just killers on that. So like I don't use barely, you very rarely will ever see me use anything that's not stainless steel. Uh, unless it's like titanium or, you know, philonic or something like that. Uh, so then I was able to replace like what would normally be a stainless steel set of standoffs or a titanium backspacer with G10, which functions exactly the same way, uh, but gives you uh, a less expensive option. It's much faster than a machine. Uh, it's lightweight, which is really cool. Uh, and it's also, um, you know, it's really stable. Uh, so all the function, fit, form, and function is there. It's just, it's a less expensive material and it's easier to machine. So we're able to reduce some costs there. Uh, you're not going with the HRD. Since we get the HRDs made in Japan, um, it's, they're pretty expensive. Um, so, you know, that, that, that's able to reduce some costing there. So pretty cool, you know, and, you know, looking at the manufacturing wise, um, you know, laser cutting the stainless steel inserts, uh, for the liner lock was less expensive, uh, than our typical water jet and machining process. So that was super helpful. Um, you know, we're able to be able to save some money there. So it was really cool project. It was really neat. It gave me an opportunity to learn a lot along the path of doing this to uh, be able to ease manufacturing. Um, so that's been something I've never really focused on because my whole goal is just like never a compromise, but it's, uh, I look at it now and I realize it's not really a compromise. It's just a, a learning process and being able to, to learn a better way to do things. Or in this case, learning a better way to do something a little bit less expensively while maintaining all of our stringent standards that we have on everything. So pretty cool project. So like I said, three and five sixteenths blade. Uh, and then the handle is four and five sixteenths. So inch difference, uh, overall thickness. Let me pull that up because I'm not a hundred percent, not including the clip overall thickness is just shy of half an inch. So just shy of half an inch thick total thickness on that. 
So there's your G10 backspacer, your blade, all this fun stuff. And then blade thickness, I can never remember all these specs, but we're at, uh, we went in between eighth inch and five thirty seconds. That was another way we were able to reduce some costs. Um, so you can go, a lot of times you can get steel uh, in smaller sheets that are kind of in between sizes. You can get a really good deal on them. Uh, so I was able to get some stuff that was pretty much exactly 530 seconds. So obviously I can't clean it up on the grinder and everything else to 530 seconds. So it reduces just a little bit more. Um, so we're able to reduce some costs there. So super cool there. Um, and you know, realistically, you know, it's like, it's like 140 thousands, 130 something thousand. So it's really, it's like, it's so in between, like it don't even matter. Um, but overall, I really like it because I've always found that an eighth inch thick blade is just a little bit too thin and I'm, I'm rather hard on things. Um, but I'm also finding for a smaller, lighter weight knife, 530 seconds is a little too much. So the in-between, I'm kind of digging the in-between. Uh, it's, it's pretty cool. I like it. Uh, so the, the fit in your hand is phenomenal on this guy. It's fits your hand extremely well. Uh, very smooth transitions on all of those pieces. Forward or reverse grip. And for the first time in a long time, it's not my traditional Japanese style Tonto. It's more of a upswept tip. Uh, and you will find you combatives people will find that the tip is in line with the end of the handle. Uh, so makes for very nice and steady. So overall, this should be a very usable blade shape when it comes to any any utilitarian task uh, or outdoor tasks, uh, field craft stuff. A very utilitarian shape. This is a pretty standard shape in the range of blades. But we went with the swedge. We were able to lighten up the blade a little bit further without without increasing costs a great deal. So anytime I can lighten something up without reducing strength, I'm all for it. So pretty excited about this, guys. So again, we're gonna have a couple options. We'll have OD Green and Black G10. Uh, we may or may not offer like a carbon fiber version one day, depending on you know how popular this knife is. Maybe we'll do a sprint run, a small run of them or something. Um, but yeah, so look for this here very shortly to drop on the website and at all, all of our awesome dealers. So hey, once again, I really appreciate all of you guys watching these videos. Please smash that subscribe button and tell all your friends about the video so we get more than a few hundred uh, people watching these videos. And uh, again, really appreciate you guys, all your patronage, and you know, you guys are the reason we can keep these doors open and keep selling all these awesome knives. Uh, unfortunately, we have been selling out like crazy lately. I don't know what's going on, um, you know, other than the COVID thing. Um, everybody has been buying everything up, so please make sure you check it out pretty quick. Um, Pre-orders sold pretty quick are selling really quick on these. Um, I think we don't have a whole lot left, so that's why I'm a little bit behind on getting this video. It's just been total chaos. So once again, check out our website, jcobackknives.com. We've got a list of all of our awesome dealers and you can buy them direct on the website. Check out all of our social media under jcobackknives. And thank you again for watching these videos. Really appreciate it. God bless. <laughs>